Mr. OK. He's from Nigeria. And as you will see from the slide, he's from the AATF, the African Agricultural Technology Foundation. And I'm sure he's going to tell you more about that. Uh, he's, he's, uh, in the, in the um, program booklet, his talk has been given a sort of a, a, a modification. But what he is talking about is water efficient maize for Africa. He's been with AATF since 2009 as project manager. And I've known him since then because I was the founding board chair of the AATF a, a zillion years ago. Before that, he was with um, uh, Africa Rice Center and was involved with the New Rice for Africa. He was also involved in ITA. And so, Sylvester, over to you. Good afternoon. Yeah, I know it's come, it can be a challenge to speak just after lunch, but I will try my best to keep you awake by engaging you. Uh, I want to thank the organizer first and foremost for giving me the opportunity to come and share our exciting experience regarding this project, which is a PPP project. Uh, as I go, I would like to just go through uh, my talk on behalf of those organizations which you have seen, which I will mention later on, just first introduce my, the organization where I work, AATF. Then why do we need a project like WEMA, Water Efficient Means for Africa? Then I'll talk about the partnership structure because it's a PPP and it's been described as one of the best, one of the most successful PPP in agriculture in the tropical world. Uh, then we talked about some of the development, product development strategy we adopted, then key achievements, and I draw some conclusions. Now, AATF is African Agricultural Technology Foundation. It's been established in 2003, as she mentioned, with a vision to make Africa a food secure and a prosperous continent. Now, we are operating at a different level from other organizations like the CG Center. We use PPP, Public Private Partnership Approach. And the whole idea is to bring technological and non technological uh, solutions or technology to help farmers increase their productivity have food security, but using agribusiness approach with the aim of creating wealth. As we had, you know, earlier on, we want to make farmers move from subsistence to wealth creation through business, agriculture as a business. This is the whole idea about AATS. So there are several projects, as you will see in there, we have 11 projects that we are working on. I'm going to talk about one, and Jennifer might, will talk about another one later. But we're not such a big organization. Like I say, we, have, we are operating with 80 partner organizations that are involved. And we, have, we are focusing on nine crops. Here are some of the projects. Our focus is in mostly West Africa and East and Southern Africa. That's about AATF. If you want to hear, read more about them and about PPP, how it works, we have uh, the link there to, to use. However, let me just go to why I am standing in front of you. I'm standing in front of you because a third of our African population depend on a crop called maize or corn if we are in America. Now, the high, this high consumption of maize in Africa. A country like Kenya, where I am coming from, more than 100 kilograms of maize is consumed per annum. If you move even towards south by to, to Malawi, almost 120, 130 kilograms is consumed. Now you could imagine if that crop, as important as it is, is affected by drought, how that is going to affect food security. And maize also is known to be very sensitive to drought. If there is no water, you quickly see it. And if there is water and you are fertilizer, you see very good response. So that's why 
a crop like this is very important to, uh, for, as a food security crop to address. I don't know whether you can see that very clear, but if you look at that picture, there's something there. It's bent, isn't it? And it's dry. This is a drought-tolerant crop grown in Louisville and is transgenic drought-tolerant crop. That's the breeder, our coordinator in South Africa. Now, when we were testing these products in that site, at that site, we realized that when there is a greener vegetation and the pest, stem borer, for instance, can't get a greener crop, they come to your feed, they feed on it, and what then happens? The value of drought rate drops. In fact, in 2010, we lost one five hectare of trial to stem borer. So we said, well, no, it means that we are not going to address drought alone. We must address drought with insect protection or insect resistance. Now, just don't look up first. I mentioned about insects. When we started, we started with stem borer. And it's so important because in Kenya alone, they lose 90 million US dollars annually to stem borer. Coincidentally, the same 90 million is imported into the country to meet food shortage. It means that if you can address the problem, you will reduce import importation of food. Then this big guy came in from the Americans, not Americans. I don't know which of the countries, so let me say not Americans. They call it fall army warm. You can see it. This just came visiting 2016. 2016, not too long ago. Within 2016 and September, September 2017, when Kabi made this evaluation, the project country, six project countries were losing 1.5 to 3.2 billion. That is 6 to 11, 15 million tons of maize. As I talk to you now, farmers in most parts of Africa are crying. All these countries painted red, they are crying about this pest. So we felt it's a pro something to address. If not, then food security in Africa is threatened because maize is a major crop in Africa. Now, I go back to Wema. What is Wema? Wema just simply means water-efficient maize for Africa. It's a project that started in 2008 and ran up to January 2017. The whole idea is it's a PPP, public-private partnership project, established to develop and deploy royalty-free, drought-tolerant, and insect-resistant, what I call, in quote, climate-smart white maize for our African farmers. The whole idea behind it is to increase uh, yield stability and protect uh, farmers' investment in adoption of best management practices. What that simply means is the use of fertilizer and the use of improved seed. Because we saw that when a farmer invests in buying seed, invests in buying fertilizer this year, and there is drought, the quality, and he cannot or she cannot get the crop, the next year, if you encourage that farmer to buy seed or apply fertilizer, the farmer will be re reluctant. So, but if you could get some stable, some a bit of yield, where the farmer would have lost completely, then that will encourage the farmer to adopt the technology. So this was what uh, our vision was to, to help the farmers. Now, I talk about the partnership. It's good to explain. Now, we have agricultural research systems of Kenya, Uganda, Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania. And there is one there that I put in blue. That's a big brother that just joined the family last year. They saw some of the products from Wema, and they wrote directly to the Gates Foundation. We want to be part of Wema to enjoy some of these products we are seeing. We just sat down and we got, and it, we were told that, look, Ethiopia is interested in joining the Wema family. Are you sure? Will you be able to absorb them? We say, why not? If there are resources, <laughs> the more, the merrier. So that's how. By this time last year, Ethiopia came into the Wema family. And then you ask, in a partnership like this, what would you expect? 
You want to gain something, you want to give up something. So we all agree to solve this problem of drought together. And these guys, they are bringing in uh, their expertise in field testing, uh, been breeding and release of hybrids, and also regulatory approval. Of course, you all know CIMID. Headquarters is in Mexico, but they have office in Kenya. And they are known as Global Maize uh, Research, Maize and Wheat Research Institute. But in, in this project, they are su supporting us with the breeding for uh, maize in terms of drought tolerance. And they know very well the African agroecology. Then we, our role is to assess technology on behalf of our farmers, develop them into products, appropriate technology, and then give them to farmers. So it's just along the value chain. You don't just test product and drop them. No, it has to get to the farmer. If they don't get to the farmer and farmers are not benefiting, forget it. So as I will show you. Now, people will ask me, why Monsanto? Monsanto agreed we got this problem of drought. At the time the project started, Monsanto was already testing the drought guide trade in the U.S. And we said, oh, African farmers experience more drought than U.S. because a third of Africa, a third of, uh, or three out of four years of drought, huge drought, have occurred in Africa, not in, in the U.S. So please, this is where we need it in Africa. So we negotiated, they gave us royalty free. We also asked them, when we saw the problem of insect, we also asked them, can we get your insect protection trade? After long negotiation, they gave us that one. And then there were two versions. They gave us one. Then South Africa said, but this one you gave the project, we have been growing it for a long time. Can you give us the newest version? We negotiated again, they gave it to us. So, and they gave us their regulatory package. I, I don't know. In the parts of the world I come from, when you have a problem and someone have, comes to your aid, what do you do? You say, thank you. So join me to say thank you to Monsanto. Please, they will convey it, your message to them. Because I don't know. Tomorrow we may go in again to meet them. So I will always have to appreciate them so that when I go again, we can ask them. We have, people are appreciating you all over the world for giving us royalty free. So please give us more. So the, the, this is a project with several partners involved, as you will see. But because drought is such a complex uh, project, uh, um, issue to address, we had to form teams. We have product development team, product deployment team, regulatory team, communication team, legal and licensing team, technical operation committee, and we have very important, I put it in bold, executive advisory board. For any PPP to succeed, as a lesson we learn, there has to be ownership, executive ownership of the product and the project. And this has helped us as a major pillar for the success of this project. In addition to build of trust and also having well-defined roles and responsibility by each team and the, uh, the various partners involved. Now, the strategy, this is just what the family looks like. You can imagine in each annual review and planning meeting, you have 80 people, professionals from different parts of the world, addressing a problem. This is what we look like. So what we did was to combine the use of classical plant breeding and marker-assisted uh, breeding approaches and transgenic. Now, for the classical breeding, we're using tools such as double hyploid, uh, molecular-assisted uh, uh, breeding, all to speed up the process of getting the inbred line or the parental that we cross to make hybrids. That's just make it faster. Then the whole idea behind this is the one to get options for our farmers. If you have products that are conventionally bred, you are interested, you get it. If you have products that are genetically modified, you get it. So in this case, what we did was to get the drug guard gene from Monsanto, which is cold shock protein from Bacterium subtilis, which they identified with BSF. And then we have the BT, which has been popular, so when we develop these products, we further enhance them using the drought tolerance using the CSP, bean, uh, CSP gene, the drought guard gene. And we said, okay, if we do that, we will increase the 
percentage of yield advantage maybe by another 10%. Then, if you grow them, as I showed you earlier, you could lose the product. So, in that case, we then decided to have um, the insect protection on it. So, these, these are some of the products. This is the conventionally bred product. We have a, 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 a drought, call it drought, tego. Tego just simply means shield in Latin. Just quickly, here are some of the results. We have over 110, uh, over 100 hybrids, conventionally bred, approved, and 36 inbred line available for, uh, for seed company to license. This is the first project in Africa that we are aware of that is using humanitarian use license to deploy products, just to make sure that the products are well guided and get to the farmers. Now, through the project, AATF had established a startup company because we found the problem of basic, uh, basic seed, which is foundation seed, was a key constraint for seed companies. So through working with Gates Foundation, we, established, we established a startup that should break even by in the next five years for, to support the, uh, the seed companies, all the seed companies in Africa, to get foundation seed or basic seed. So right as I talk to you, 38 seed companies have licensed the drought ego hybrid, and they are using it to make business. Again, they did an adoption study about uh, last year, and we found 26% adoption rate, with 46% when corrected for those who were not exposed to the product, all within three years of product commercialization. This was hell. And over five, in five years, over 5,000 tons of certified seed were produced by seed company guided by the project. This information, when we got it to African, African uh, Bank, the, the CEO of African Bank, African Development Bank, saw this and was very impressed. Said, look, my, I have a program which was mentioned earlier on technology for African agri transformation. This product should be one of it. And we want to upscale it to more countries. So we are moving from the five countries that we initially started to 12 countries supported by African Development Bank. That just started last month. Quickly, uh, let me just move. This is what the product looks like. I look like a male superstar, don't I? <laughs> but I'm not the breeder. I'm only showcasing the product. Now, we did a study in Kenya. You can see. Huge, this was the strategy we adopted. Rather than having few testing, we had massive demonstration. In a given year, you have more than 200 in, around, spread around the maize growing agroecology. So that farmer, on farmer's field, growing it themselves. Now, we have what we call uh, field days where seed companies come and then we educate for other farmers. The seed companies sell their seed to the farmers based on the testimony the farmers are giving. By so doing, there is more, creating more demand for the product. You can see the yield increasing on average by 1.2 within these three years of commercialization compared with national average. So we believe that if this continues, the national average is going to certainly move from 1.8 to almost three tons per hectare very soon within the next few years. Now I move quickly to this transgenic. Teller also means protection, shield. So you see, the, this is the first shield, drought tolerant. Then you protect it with insect. Then you stack it where they are both drought trade and insect protection trade. Are stacked. This is the ultimate you want to give to the farmers. So quickly, this is the, the performance of the drought trade. When there is drought, you can have good air. But if there is no drought, you get uh, the well water, you get even double ear in South Africa. We got a uh, five traded hybrid with the gene had 8 to 14%. Our target was if we could get 10, but we are getting even up to 14% due to the drought trade. That's after several years of trace testing. Now the BT, this is important. In five seasons, we carried out this study. We found that crops, the, 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 the maize plant that received the BT gene had yield of 52% on average compared with the non-BT. What does this mean? It's not like fertilizer. It means that if Jennifer, for example, is an, a, a progressive farmer, innovative farmer, and I choose not to grow GM, if she grows GM, she's going to have 152 bags, I will have 100 bags. 
you will ask me, where, how come? We bought the same amount of seed. She may pay slightly premium price because the seed has value than my own. But mine was lost to this insect, stem borer. This is what my crop will look like, and this is what her crop will look like. This is what technology brings to farmers. Quickly. So in summary of the Teller product, in South Africa, for the first time, smallholder farmers got this product in the for last two seasons royalty free. This they would have paid heavily to Monsanto, but because we got this royalty free from Monsanto, they wouldn't have to pay the extra technology fee for this. And 172 tons of this have been produced and are being sold by seed company and are being sold to the farmer. Now, we talk about political will in, earlier in the morning. These hybrids, 13 of them, tell her, are sitting on our shelf as I talk to you since 2016. Why? You will ask me why. The reason is that when we got the regulation, temp, uh, uh, provisional deregulation or approval of the trait, we, by the National, by the national um, Biosafety or, uh, Agency, they told us, go to these guys, the National Environmental Management Agency, get a license from them. When you submit an environmental impact assessment report to them, they will give you a license which you will use in putting this pro uh, product through the national uh, agency that also is responsible for independent testing of this variety to see which one are best to release to the farmer. As I talked to you from 2016 April to today, we've not been given the license. Now, do you think there is political will to promote the product? I leave that one for you to judge. I don't want to talk more about that. Now, the, as I said, the ultimate is one that combines, you breed with drought, uh, drought tolerance, then you combine with two traits further enhancing the drought trait tolerance and then protecting it with insects. This, again, we call teller for the farmers to know the difference. We did this. We have the symbol protected. I know uh, my time, but let me just, just show you. Are you able to spot difference between these? I think it's clear, right? It's clear. Now, let me tell you the story. Fall Army Worm visited this trial, CFT, confined field trial. This is confined field trial, not on farmer's field. The visitor where they were testing this for the efficacy of BT in controlling stem borer. These guys had set up this trial, and what happened? Fall army worm came, they didn't know about it. So they kept saying, this crop is not, this is not the way we used to see stem borer attacking. So they took samples of the bug, they took it to lab, different lab, to help them identify what is this. This is not stem borer. At the end of the day, they found out that it's called four army worm. It came from the Americans the previous year, but they were experiencing it for the first time. And then they took photos. Look at that. I think this is obvious. Now, some anti-technology, when we show them this, you know what they say? They say, how can the crop, this crop be taller than this if they were planted the same time? This is Photoshop. Does that make sense to anyone? That is Photoshop, that is not possible. Anyway, I leave you with that. So the yield, again, we saw that for all the varieties tested there, they had 19 to 26% yield advantage over the isogenic, the ones without the, the trait. Again, we said, okay, that's in Uganda. Let's also look at the performance in Mozambique. In Mozambique, again, it was tested. You can see the difference. Of course, under natural infestation of stem borer and four army worm. There was no spraying. There was no uh, 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 giving uh, the, 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 the insects to the plant, as I will show you in the next one. The yield, again, was ranged from 22 to 98 percent based on the level of infestation because it's under natural infestation. Then we looked at under where we now tested. We gave the, the, the larvae of stem borer to the plant. This lady is a breeder entomologist. She is very good in growing stem borer. They are like her babies. She would, sorry for that. <laughs> so she picks them. Every plant here, every plant on this field receives 10 larvae of stem borer. You do it two weeks after planting. Another two weeks you give, and then you wait. Again, stem borer was there. Four amyworm came. The effect of four amyworm became more severe than the effect of 
for, uh, of the stem borer which we are so going to protect. Again, the yield range from 22 to 28%. We said, okay, that was three first year. Three countries. We said, okay, let's repeat the trial the next year. So in 2018, again, look at the rate. Now, if you are a farmer, are you going to get anything from this? Obviously, no. But this is the crop with the BT. This is the crop with the BT. Then you ask, why are our African farmers not adopting the technology? I draw a conclusion. I want you to answer that one or we can discuss. I'm not going to answer that. But however, I want to conclude my talk by saying that the project facilitated the production of 5,349 tons of seed through seed company, enough to plant over 213,000 uh, hectares and to reach 3.21 million people. Our target to the Gates Foundation, when we initiated the project five years before then, was that we will reach 550,000 farm households. But we reached, we got 97%. I know many of you are professors. If you score 97%, what do you get? An A-star grade, which means the partnership is successful. So we should replicate it. And that's why I'm concluding there to say that the use of participatory, not just PPP, participate, involve the farmers, involve the stakeholders, as a model is very effective in developing and promoting uh, the uptake of agricultural technology, but you can go nowhere if you don't have political way, as we saw in one of the countries. And then we say in that the trades, the BT trade, should be an important component of integrated pest management if we want to fight the battle and win or fall I mean warm. It has come to stay in Africa. It can go, it's replicating very, very rapid and can move how many kilometers, 200 kilometers, they say, in a night. So it's a big problem. And recently, we just got approval for the teller means that we focus more on just getting regulatory approval and initiating commercialization in the five countries that we are working. But there is a country, Nigeria, is waiting behind, wanting to be part of the Wema family. We are here to get money. We want to get them, but no money. So thank you all, and I acknowledge all of you for uh, participating in this our partnership. Thank you. Thank you.